thank you, uh, Prof. Uh, Robert, uh, the foundation, but also um, Sandra for the uh, opportunity uh, that I was given to uh, make uh, this presentation here. It was very hectic for me to, to get here. But finally, I'm here I also like to thank the International Center for Theoretical Physics for the support they, they gave me. And also for your kind presence to be here, uh, even at this very late hour. I hope you'll be patient with me. I'll just be very, very brief because time is already uh, spent. Uh, I am um, uh, an expert of radio and electromagnetics, uh, uh, electromagnetic waves. And we would like to present on a new uh, technology, um, which is not necessarily new, but we are exploiting it uh, for the first time in, 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 this, uh, in this, the past two years. It's called the white space technology. It is inspired from the term motainai, which uh, conveys a sense of regret uh, for waste. Um, so what we're doing is we're looking at the um, channels. Can I have the uh, So uh, we're looking at the concept of uh, when we tune in the TV channels, so we, 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 we find that some of the channels are scrambled, but some are not there, and they are free channels. So we are particularly interested to say what could we do, especially in Africa, where uh, there is abundant of unused spectrum. It is assigned but unused. So we we have discovered that these could be used for broadband connectivity um, uh, when we exploit them uh, in good way and develop some radios which could be used for that. We are in partnership with the International Center for Theoretical Physics, but also the regulatory uh, framework. And we, I'm coming from the University of Malawi. Uh, so basically, I've already given the, the comments. But just to say that ITU selected our country, Malawi, and particularly myself, to be an expert to promote the technology of white spaces uh, communication. And so I made a recommendation which passed at the Forum for Telecom uh, uh, Operators and regulators uh, in Africa. Sometimes people think that uh, white spaces is a hype, that it's, it's just talk. Uh, but uh, I want to say that if it is a hype, uh, then uh, don't believe the hype. But if it is the truth, uh, then we can believe it. And this is not a solution or a concept only for Africa. It's for the whole world, uh, because we are moving or migrating from static uh, spectrum allocation to dynamic spectrum allocation. And this has been uh, promoted all over the world uh, with so many forums. It is inspired from uh, tactical communication of the military. All the base telecommunications is based uh, or first uh, experimented uh, with the military uh, people and then uh, you know, later on passed to the civilian population. So in military, uh, we actually uh, talk of tactical communication. And um, there are two approaches to sense whether or not we have a white space or a blank space. One approach is using a database which Google and Microsoft are promoting. Uh, the other one is doing spectral sensing using sensors which can actually sniff in within the environment uh, and uh, tell whether or not a channel is available and then request uh, from the base station or, uh, or communication device whether or not they can use that specific channel. So this is the approach that we adopted and uh, we have worked on uh, in tirelessly. Unlike the database approach by Google and Microsoft, and for that purpose, we did not receive any funding from Google and uh, Microsoft the past two years. But we uh, devoted ourselves without money, without funding, uh, to do spectral sensing based on a low cost uh, equipment that we developed, uh, part of it in partnership with the International Center for Theoretical Physics in Trieste, Italy. So our sensors were able to demonstrate that in any given wireless uh, band, uh, you could see. Uh, some gaps or blanks. We've, we we de define these ones as blank spaces. And we know that from pupil from primary or kindergarten, when we have a blank space or slate, we are required to fill it. And we're using the concept of a kindergarten a baby uh, to, uh, to, to say, if, if we have a, a blank spectrum or channel, can we fill it up? 
So yes, we fill it up with broader communication because we know that people would love to communicate and so many socioeconomic issues could be realized well if we communicate uh, within ourselves, especially in rural uh, communications. So this has a chance also to integrate well with mobile operators. It should not threaten op operators because uh, we provide offloading uh, solutions to uh, traffic uh, mobile uh, operators and internet service providers too. And that uh, we can apply, we are actually developing applications, mobile applications, which can support, for example, e-healthcare, uh, transportation of blood uh, from one place to the other, making sure that the temperature is maintained. Uh, so with the white space infrastructure integrated with me medicine, with the 4G and beyond 4G or fourth generation networks, we're able still to maintain our sense and uh, usefulness. So this is a typical low cost scenario where we are doing measurements in any of a given geolocation. Uh, this is actually my car, very cheap uh, car um, that I, I use and the laptops which are very odd uh, based on Linux, portable Linux applications. We are writing very many scripts which are able to abstract data uh, from uh, spectrum analyzers which cost only 100 euro and against uh, the 6,000 or 10,000 US dollar uh, spectrum analyzers, which are sold by uh, Lord issuers of German and needs of Japan and the adjuvant of US. So this is just a very typical low cost, but generating very excellent results as you will see in the next uh, slides. So these are typical the results we were able to show. And then these are uh, where you have very low signals, uh, like here below minus 100 dBm. Those are what the white spaces are. Basically, there's no signal. But where the peaks are, that's where communication is taking place. So we skip where communication is taking place, but we optimize or use where the gaps are. So we proved that there are white spaces. And then we had to train our own local people because we didn't have money to uh, fly in experts from west or north or east to come and uh, help uh, with uh, our own communication problems in Africa. So we had to, when we discovered these things, we benchmarked what Google are doing, what Microsoft is doing. Uh, Microsoft later on agreed to say, okay, we can send our expert to explain on one thing, we accepted to do that, uh, but we still maintained our scientific approach of uh, sensing, uh, spectral sensing, which we have more power and uh, you know, capacity to do. And we trained more than 73 uh, Malawians and some other Africans who are moving every month to maybe two countries in Africa to do these kind of trainings. And the next one is gonna be in Kenya uh, to a population of Africans in mobile, telecom, and uh, related uh, technologies. So when we did this, um, you see that uh, this is the kind of certificate we gave to those people who were trained, uh, certificate of participation uh, to, uh, on specific subjects. And you see there's a logo of Microsoft, uh, University of Malawi, the regulator, and the mobile, Medic Mobile, to show a typical application of the white space technology in supporting life or quality of life. And uh, so this is the Google and Microsoft database, which we benchmarked. And uh, then the government of Malawi appreciating the technology in Africa. It started with South Africa, supported by Google, and Kenya by Microsoft, and uh, Malawi by ourselves. Uh, and then um, this is typically what we're doing, uh, using different simulations, the radio propagation models, uh, using long realized, realized Nakagami fading, fading channels, and different things. And we build our own mass because to import uh, steel and other to build up towers and mass, it's very expensive. So we're using basic you know, metals that we have, fabricate them into some 40, this is a 40 meter radio mass that we did, putting in an FM radio for communication to the community, but also white space to, for broadband connectivity and data transfer between institutions which are later on present. So typically this is what we're doing. This is for FM and also for the white space which is using UHF uh, uh, UDA, uh, Yagi UDA antennas, which I'll show later. So at ITU, I, fo I pushed a, a recommendation, which is recommendation number nine uh, from Victoria Falls, uh, which say the ITU said, okay, I think we all agree now that we should promote uh, uh, white spaces and the possible regulation of the same uh, and the framework, which so now all regulators in Africa, I think this is gonna be adopted very quickly. In Ghana, last two weeks, the worldwide made as a global dynamic spectrum on RANS, talking about the same thing. I know Nigeria is working on that, Ghana is working uh, 
Rwanda, Uganda got funding two weeks ago, and many, many African countries are going to exploit this because it is working on there. Uh, we are regretting why we have so much waste uh, of spectrum when we could use it for broadband connectivity as an access technology beyond uh, uh, fiber optics, which we are laying as a backbone. Um, so basically, uh, this is a typical uh, base station equipment, like the antennas. Uh, these are partners from uh, the International Center for Theoretical Physics, but also the regulator. All of us were made to do the installations, and we have been monitoring and publishing the results for the past one, uh, one and a half years uh, in different journals and conferences. So the second, uh, the, the, we have connected a school. Uh, which we are using, we are calling white spaces for these spaces. Uh, the white space technology supporting digital repositories uh, for access of uh, books uh, from universal libraries, digital libraries, but also uh, accessing of um, uh, national libraries. Uh, and we have also connected the uh, health uh, hospital and also uh, the seismic detection center. So um, basically, Sometimes we were not able to detect the signal properly uh, due to height and position, and we had to use trees to mount uh, our own type of antennas, uh, UHF antennas. And uh, you can see this is my research group. Uh, this, there's only one lady to support gender issues. Only one lady had the confidence to work with us for the past two years. She's a second year undergrad in physics. And the rest are men, and these are professors from uh, International Center for Theoretical Physics. We are using trees to move with camera holders to bring about a mobile base station to detect uh, signals uh, different places. Yeah, so this is finally at 20 kilometers. This is unprecedented. Nowhere in the world we have uh, demonstrated uh, communication at 20 kilometers from a white space, local space station, which operates at 30 watts and transmitting at 4 watts uh, and then reaching up to 18.57 kilometers to support uh, life. This at the hospital. And uh, so this is uh, really unprecedented and uh, uh, is being uh, encouraged. And schools also have been connected. A brighter tomorrow with TV watt spaces. Uh, we are taking advantage of the best or good propagation releases of the low UHF band, which is also ultra wide. And uh, so basically, that's the summary of the network. And then uh, the other things I will skip. This is actually in a typical secondary school, undergrad, not undergrad, but a high school laboratory, where computers were donated, and then we connected them. they using the TV white space internet uh, propagation. And then the students were trained. All the 20 students who are taking computer science were trained on how to do internet, opened up email accounts, and now they talk to all the professors about their career and other very difficult subjects. Uh, these are really 13, 14 year old senior uh, high school students. Uh, and uh, this is my uh, researcher who is now going to Japan for uh, his master. Uh, next year uh, for demonstrating uh, what we could do uh, with our own. And then uh, these are the results. We could do, we tested 1.5, 1.8 megabit per second speeds uh, uh, and a few other things. And then we saw that uh, for us to scale up, the major challenge is going to be on equipment, antennas, and other things. So we used our own uh, science of electromagnetics, second theory, to design and develop antennas which are very useful for TV, uh, but also for, the, uh, for, 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 the, for this technology. So this is uh, Andy. We compared it with the typical convention antennas, which are there, which did not work. And we built our own bow tie or smart antenna we call sometimes a butterfly. So this is a UHF butterfly antenna. Uh, it's very simple, based on wire, because that's the only thing. We don't have patch or a type of substrates which we could use uh, for this. But the uh, wires are available anytime. So we look at all the specific uh, electrical uh, specifications of the wires, and then we build our own uh, UHF butterfly antennas, which are uh, have those very good characteristics uh, of, for our purpose. And uh, then uh, people from South Africa came to appreciate our technology. Uh, this is in my lab, and uh, we tested with the different analyzers, and uh, they performed uh, excellently. Uh, these are uh, people from uh, scientists from South Africa. And uh, then we demonstrate that. And uh, finally, uh, this is what the world perceptions are on this uh, in looking. Microsoft has this one, say, SADIC, ITU, and several other. Um, 
Conclusions is that uh, this technology is real. Uh, we've demonstrated in our country. It's t tested in, in, in South Africa and several other countries in Kenya. Tanzania is up next for with Microsoft support. And uh, Singapore is on that, several other countries. US is already using that in California because we're using radios from California, Carson's radio. Yeah, so basically, and we have published on, on those ones. So basically, I have uh, actually also printed the most frequent asked questions uh, which I've put on your tables, um, which I think you could look at most of the questions people ask me uh, on this. Thank you very much. Sorry, thank you. Uh, thank you. I suggest we have questions, two questions on this talk because the other one is a different topic. Okay, who wants to ask a question, a clarification maybe, because it's a difficult subject. Yes, good work, and I, I want to know, um, is it dedicated only to schools or, I mean, for uh, all people in the region? Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, this infrastructure is useful for different uh, socioeconomic uh, sectors. We have de connected uh, a school to support education. We have s connected a seismic station, which is collecting data from under earth uh, on seismic waves and detection. And uh, this was being done using flashcards and data was sent to uh, Penn State University in the US uh, once every month, a uh, two gig uh, data. But now it's being done in quasi real time collect data underground 10 meters deep and uh, be analyzed in Penn State University and the results discussed with um, our, our country and other countries in, in the region in Africa. And also we're supporting uh, um, uh, the uh, health for e-healthcare support where we are having the concept of virtual diagnosis because we have very, very few sp specialist doctors in Africa, especially in issues of radiology. In Malawi, we only have one doctor. But now with this kind of thing, X-ray can be done and as it's being done using this infrastructure, a, a specialist is able to analyze and advise what to be done in a remote X-ray uh, point. And the meter is also connected on issues of security. Thank you. Other question? Um, has your government um, started to, to, to work with you to collect their own information? Do they ask you to help them uh, to collect information? I don't know about hospitals or about agriculture or, you know, to, 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 to get more data about what, what's happening in the country. Yes, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, this has been actually worked well because of the full government support to collect the data, to deploy it, to test it, to pilot it in all the government institutions. And also that in June, uh, a regulation will be coming out uh, from the regulator itself, which is under the Minister of Information and Communication, where we'll have the television white space uh, regulations and specification for the kind of devices we could use in, in Malawi. And the government is adopting it as an access technology. Um, to promote usage of uh, communication in a rural where there's over 75% population, uh, but it was being ignored by current operators because there was no business sense in there. But with this one, with low cost regulation and everything else, the government is supporting the initiative. Maybe from July onwards, we'll attract foreign and local investors on the same. Thank you. Okay, so we thank the speaker. <laughs>